this was the further analysis uh, which was pre-specified in the target A trial. Uh, so because the main results were published in the British Medical Journal and there wasn't space to put every result in it, this, this result uh, were four main, four further analysis. One was a subgroup analysis among individual breast cancer subtypes, which we would know preoperatively. And we found that uh, local recurrence-free survival, that is uh, local control of breast cancer between target IORT and whole breast radiotherapy was no different for every tumor subtype. So this was the first subgroup analysis. And we also found that overall survival was significantly better with target IORT for grade one and grade two cancers. And this was a big difference of about 4.4%. 4 so that was one part of this paper, subgroup analysis. Secondly, we found a very interesting thing is that we have known for a long time that when patients get local recurrence after receiving whole breast radiotherapy, their prognosis is bad. They are destined to have recurrence in distant disease sooner than those who don't get local recurrence after whole breast radiotherapy. And we found the same thing in the target A trial, that those who had local recurrence after whole breast radiotherapy had poor outcomes. However, those who had local recurrence after intraoperative radiotherapy did not share the same poor outcome. So their outcome remained the same as those who did not have local recurrence, either in the IORT arm or in the whole breast radiotherapy arm. So uh, having a local recurrence after target IORT is not a harbinger of good prognosis. These patients maintain their good prognosis. That was number two. Number three, we also developed a tool for people to use the risk adopted approach. So you can go on this website called target, T-A-R-G-I-T dot org dot UK slash add RT. And you can put in your individual patient characteristics. So this logistic regression model can tell you which patients of yours, if they were in the target A trial, would receive whole breast radiotherapy in addition to have target IORT. About 20% did receive this, but it was not a black and white uh, criteria. Criteria are given to individual sites and depending on patient's various characteristics, the multidisciplinary team decided this patient gets it. So we had specific criteria such as being an invasive lobular cancer, multiple positive nodes or mar positive margins, really positive margins and uh, lobular cancer were the definite criteria, but sites would give it if they had worst prognosis. And you can put this criteria for your patient and you'll get an answer of what percentage of patients had received external beam radiotherapy in addition to IORT in that patient. And that would be help to guide you, which is the, uh, whether you should, your patient should get it or not. So that was very useful. And then finally, we had a very interesting biological outcome, which we had seen when we had analyzed this before, but we found it again. So remember, I've said that as a risk-adapted approach, some patients randomized to have target IORT also received whole breast radiotherapy as per protocol, about 20%. Now, if you want to compare and find out the difference between receiving external beam radiotherapy compared with not receiving external beam radiotherapy to find out the effect of scattered radiation on non-breast cancer deaths, what would you find? You would find that you compare those 899 patients who did not receive further radiotherapy compared with the whole group of external beam radiotherapy, a non-randomized comparison. And you found there was a significant reduction in non-breast cancer mortality. This is not surprising because the effect of scattered radiation is well known. However, the interesting point is that we also compared patients who received target IORT and external beam plus compared them with those who had external beam. So since both the groups received external beam, this difference if we found any between non-breast cancer deaths would be because of giving target IORT. And why do you think that giving a radiation could make a difference? Now over the last 10 to 15 years, increasing amount of data has shown that a high single dose of radiation to a small area can be immunostimulant and can modulate the immunological uh, status of the patient for a long term. And this effect is called an abscopal effect. That means away from the site of the primary. And this has been seen in various other radiotherapy studies as well. And what we found is that if you give target IORT, it seems to protect against future deaths from other causes such as heart attacks and other cancer deaths. 
So this abscopal effect has been shown in many other studies and in we are now um, currently recruited uh, nearly 1,700 patients in the target B trial of high-risk patients, where it's comparing target boost versus whole breast radiotherapy boost, um, exon beam radiotherapy boost. And if we find that this abscopal effect is present, we should find similar survival benefit when we give uh, target as boost during the operation itself. So this was the third, the final uh, new finding in this paper that we seem to have an abscopal beneficial effect of giving interrupted radiation as a high single dose during operation at the time when there is trauma to the patient. And this seems to abrogate this harmful effects of surgical trauma as well as give some positive benefit in addition to avoiding whole breast radiotherapy. So what has helped is this way we, uh, clinicians can um, have guidance regarding which patients could get whole breast radiotherapy afterwards. They can be reassured that the whole uh, that this works for all subtype tumor subtypes as long as they're eligible for the target A trial, and the fact that it, it improves overall survival. So these have been more re further reassurance to the initial results published and it helps uh, clinicians and patients to uh, have this treatment and have confidence in this treatment. And this has made more people adopt the treatment.